I've been given a message. I'm going to give you some context about that message, how I got it, and how I got here so you have context to believe. Say context to believe. Like it doesn't cross. You know, I worship the Holy Ghost and I preach from that room. Say, preach from that room. Yeah, that's that's the room I'm in. You worship who? The Holy? Yeah, he's God. Did you know that? First, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself, how I became a, a Holy Ghost worshiper. Say, Holy Ghost worshiper. Holy Ghost worshiper. But I will say, that that song that we sang right before I came up here, Holy Ghost is God in the Earth today, it's the one I play before every message for at least the last 15 years. Because it sets the context. Say, it sets, it sets. The, context. the context. But context is key. Say, context, context. Is, key. is key. That's why I'm having you say these things, because I want you to be right with me, because I have something to say next. And if you don't get what I just said, then the next thing I say is gonna like be throwing spaghetti against the wall. If it's ready, it sticks. Context is key. So how I got here is the context of what you're gonna hear today. And context is where every person comes from. You're all bringing your own little baggage of goods with you. You come in here, and so when I say something, I have to try to get that across to you in the way that you think and that's not easy simplicity is best now context creates the structure on which you believe so if you have the right context you can believe the right things if you don't have the right context we know this if we didn't have the right context we end up believing the wrong things right have you ever believed the wrong thing you know how much how well that works it doesn't work but if you get the context right then your belief can be right does that make sense mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20 and are built upon the foundation say foundation. foundation upon the Apostles and prophets Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone so it's based upon a foundation of Apostles and prophets say apostles and prophets, apostles and, prophets. and these are men right mm -hmm. so the, these men would have had to have the right context to be able to lay a foundation for people that would follow them mm -hmm. yes. this is gonna make sense in a little bit yes. men with a message say men, men. men. with a message yes. that's what the apostles and prophets were the apostle was somebody that was sent with a message a prophet is somebody sent with a message are you here yes. what good's a prophet if he doesn't give a message right, right? what good's a, what's an apostle if he doesn't give a message yeah. it's no it's founded on the message that they gave yes. does this make sense yes. Yes. you still here yes. I am part of message I didn't come here just to come down here although it is very nice a very nice location down here when you get past the city <laughs> but I didn't just come down here just so I could I could do this anywhere else and do but I have a message now everybody doesn't have a message not everyone's been given a message but I've been given a message I'm gonna give you some context about that message how I got it and how I got here so you have context to believe say context, context. To, believe. to believe am I getting this across so I am part of message if you hear and believe it will take you there say it, it. will take me, take me there. there someplace you weren't before right. this is all right but I must have belief I've got to have it if I can't get belief I've got nothing to work with you understand mm -hmm. yeah. do you remember Jesus mark chapter 6 and verse 1 and he went out from thence and came into his own country and his disciples followed him 
and then if you go down to verse 5 it said and he could there do no mighty works save that he laid hands upon a few sick folk and healed them what stopped him from doing mighty works in his own hometown they wouldn't believe they couldn't believe they were blocked from belief my point here is that Jesus needed belief how much more do we need belief in the people that are listening in order to get the message across does this make sense yes. I must have belief this reminded me of a story of Kenneth Hagin have you heard of Kenneth Hagin yes. that's the school I went to I was there for several years and studied under him he had a vision a vision of Jesus and Jesus laid his finger on Kenneth Hagin's hands and said now you're anointed for the healing ministry and then Jesus said to him in this vision because we know that Jesus is not in the earth he he was in vision form so Jesus said to him if you will tell people about this vision and then I put my finger in the palms of each one of your hands if they will believe it it will begin to work for them are you seeing this yes. so they had to have belief say they had to have belief, they had to have belief. that's my point that's why I'm, I mentioned that <laughs> it will begin to work for them so back to me because I must have belief when I was around seven years old we would go down to Florida with the family and we would go down there for a vacation but anyway so we're down there and my grandfather had a houseboat you know what a houseboat is it's like a flat boat doesn't go very fast it's got a little cabin on it and you got kind of tool around on the lakes down there there's, there's a thousand lakes down there and so he said if you know if somebody falls off here's the kill switch for this engine because the engines right underneath it grind you up if you fell off you'd go under and you know stop the engine real quick so anyway I'm seven years old and I'm sitting in a uh, lawn chair why would anyone put lawn chairs on a houseboat <laughs> you know if you sit back in a lawn chair you ever you ever like tip back in a lot what happens you flip over. it flips over it collapses and I went into the water and that water down there is like green you can't see anything in front of your face nothing uh -huh. <clears throat> and there's alligators and, there's and snakes it's disgusting so anyway I'd, I'd fallen in I was seven years old I, I don't think I knew how to swim at that point and they you know they hit the the motor and my dad and the, my mom they were all diving in I think my dad lost his glasses you know swimming around trying to find me you know you panic you're like oh my goodness this kid we liked him <laughs> and now he's gone and, and uh, but to me I had a different experience you know they were all in panic they were all running around but as I was down there and they were all panicking looking around for me I had a vision seven years old of an angel he was up there I can if I close my eyes I can see him today he's just right there so for to me it was like it was like the best day of my life I don't remember any of the other stuff and they say you know that my my hand finally came up through the back you know there's a little grate on the back of the ship and my hand came up and they pulled me up and you know so anyways I had a vision of an angel now we have a scripture Matthew chapter 18 and then verse what 10 it says take heed that you despise not one of these little ones for I say to you that in heaven their angels say angels, angels. their angels do always behold the face of my father which is in heaven so it seems like every one of us is in, is assigned an angel isn't that good news yes. 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 so you got you at least got one probably all you need most of the time so that was the beginning for me is this okay yeah. that was the beginning for me of many say many, many. angelic encounters from that point on I can list many of them I'm gonna share a few of them with you tonight is that okay mm -hmm. well this was years later I was pastoring a church in Old Orchard Beach you know where that is it's up in Maine 
Uh, I was out for a walk, praying in tongues is what I used to do. Say praying in tongues. Praying in tongues. Going for a walk. For right? A walk. Is this good? Yes. You should do it. You should try it. I know you do it, right? So I'm praying in tongues, going for a walk. And it's one way that I could get, you know, get out of the house, get away from everybody, do my thing. I can tell you the exact spot where as I'm walking, walking along, praying in tongues. Walking along, praying in tongues. An angel blew in my ear, and I knew it as soon as it happened. Well, up to that point, are you still here? I'm trying to get, I'm laying in context. Context. Say context. context. Say context. context. You got to get the context. I'd been praying because I'm a pastor of the church, and I, this was a, one of the questions on my mind and on my heart for years. Why? Does everyone put everything off till they die and go to heaven? I'll get healed when I go to heaven. I'll have my mansion when I go to heaven. Everything when they go to heaven. And of course, when you're pastoring a church, you get them all in there. And this is the doctrine of most places. God doesn't heal everybody, but when you get to heaven, he'll heal you. This kind of, this kind of language bugged me, and I was praying about it. Praying in tongues, praying in tongues, going for a walk, and whew, angel blew in my ear. And these words came to me. It's because that's where their Lord is. They put everything off till they get to heaven because that's where their Lord is. Who is their Lord? Jesus. And so when I get to heaven, I'll get healed. When I get to heaven, I'll get all the stuff because that's where my Lord is. Are you here? You know where I'm going with this, right? Yes, yes, yes. Second Corinthians chapter three and verse 17 says, now, say now. Now. now, now the Lord is that spirit. Who's the spirit? The Holy, the Holy Ghost. Now the Lord is that spirit, Holy Ghost. And where the spirit of the Lord is, where is the spirit of the Lord, by the way? He's here. He's in the earth. Yeah. Say, he's here. He's, here. he's in the earth. He's, in the earth. he's not in heaven when, you know, where Jesus is. Yeah. They sent the Holy Ghost to be with us. Now the Lord is that spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, freedom, a liberty of belief. I like to say it that way because you get to believe something you couldn't believe before. Yeah. He puts it in you. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, same Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord or the Spirit Lord. Literally, that's what it says, Spirit Lord. When you go to heaven, you meet Jesus. Have you ever heard this? I'm going to go meet Jesus, right? When you go to heaven. But here... Who can you meet? Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost. Now the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty now. Yes. Yes. Say liberty now. Liberty now. Angels are always involved in transition periods. You see that throughout the Bible. You see it, you saw it with Moses, you saw it with Jesus, you saw it with John the Baptist. Right? Angels are always involved in transition periods. And I don't know if you know it yet, but we are in a transition period. Yes. We're not at the beginning of the dispensation of the Holy Ghost. We are at the end, which means someone's transitioning. Mm -hmm. We're getting some context. Acts chapter 7, verse 51. You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in hearts and ears. You do always resist the Holy Ghost as your father did, so do you. Who is he saying they were resisting? The Holy Ghost, because the Holy Ghost was there and they were resisting him. Which of the prophets have, you, have not your fathers persecuted? Verse 53. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it so 
angels were involved in bringing in of the law are you here yes. angels were involved that's my point angels are involved in getting the new things the new doctrine into the earth yes. and into you and so after having that word affect me for a period of time being a pastor because that's where their Lord is are you still here yes. am, I, am I keeping you on the hook yes. that's where that's where their Lord is so I've been you know I was chewing on that I was meditating on it but, and then the same angel came back and said these words to me he said use these words I worship you Holy Ghost an angel speaks to you you know it's an angel he says use these words I worship you Holy Ghost what are you gonna do I'm gonna use those words and use those words I did I began using them myself by saying them say by saying them how do you use words you say them but I, I would say them I would say I worship you Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost and then after a while I would say I worship you Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost and sometimes I put my name in there I Andrew Hemstra worship you Holy Ghost take that and I preached on it I began preaching on it and I began preaching on it and some people would come in and some people would leave and some people would come in and some people would leave it's like dr. Ed Dufresne used to say you say so you're like a bus driver people get on people get off just keep driving the bus come on, come on. <clears throat> I came to the conclusion a long time ago not everybody has to like me yeah. so that angel spoke to me and said use these words I worship you Holy Ghost and I begin using them and preaching them and you've probably heard some of my messages on this right mm -hmm. I've been commissioned to make Holy Ghost worshipers out of people how did I how did I get there are you here I'm trying to again I'm, I'm context of belief I have been and not everybody has heard this yet but a lot of people have I've been commissioned to make they make make, make Holy Ghost worshipers out of people if you worship the Holy Ghost number one he likes that and he looks at you and he'll pass over a thousand other people that aren't worshiping him because they don't even acknowledge that he's God and he'll come he'll come and do things for you that he wouldn't do for anyone else yeah. That's right. That's right. are you here yes. Holy Ghost worshipers say Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Worshipers. worshipers so what is a Holy Ghost worshiper number one someone who uses the words I worship you Holy Ghost yeah. those words are not found on the lips of 99.9% .9 yeah. of the church yeah. mm -hmm. and they therefore cannot go to where you are called to go yeah. mm -hmm. where we are called to go because we have a liberty of belief that other people can't access mm -hmm. so a Holy Ghost worshiper is someone who uses the words I worship you Holy Ghost I tell you I've had people in my meetings that would I don't know if they were just put off by my general appearance or that when I started talking about the Holy Ghost and worshiping him they just shut you off and they don't want to hear another thing all they're doing is looking through their Bible to find some kind of argument to argue with you they didn't hear anything been there yeah. and if you don't think this is new or different worshiping the Holy Ghost if you don't think it's new or different then you haven't done it yet yeah. you haven't been there yet mm -hmm. I testify to the fact I've been in the ministry a long time and I testify to the fact that this is different it's so completely different it's hard to get across to people yeah. it's as if you're you're bumping into the next dispensation and the veil's taken away yeah. and a new liberty appears but this doesn't mean you don't believe all the things that everybody else believes that's what they would say 
you don't talk about Jesus enough I said I talk about Jesus all the time yes. mm -hmm. but those are some of the criticisms you get yes. but Jesus isn't here and the Holy Ghost is here yes. and you've been ignoring him the whole time mm -hmm. yeah. how about that yeah. but it, like I said it doesn't doesn't mean you don't believe all the things that other people believe yes. it's that they don't believe this and not believing this is what's keeping them out yes. are you getting anything out of this yes. Hebrews chapter 6 and then verse 1 therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ let us go on yes. let us go on say let us, let us. Go, on. go on that means you are going to go on right yes. from something to something do I, I need a chalkboard up here put out some English words let us go on we're going on from something we were in before and we're gonna go to something well frankly it's new which is sometimes scary let us go on unto perfection not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards yeah. God and of doctrine of baptisms the laying on of hands resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment verse 3 and this we will do say this, this we, we will, do. will do you have to be willing to do it you see that did you see the will in the middle of there yes. this we will do a lot of people are unwilling to do it because they're so caught up in holding on to what they were doing before yes. so I am called to make Holy Ghost worshipers out of people mm. what do you think I'm gonna attempt to do here mm -hmm. make Holy Ghost worshipers out of people yes. by the end of this message and hopefully two more messages two more, two more messages you will be a card carrying member of being a Holy Ghost worshiper. Are you getting some context? First yes. Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17. Christ sent me not to baptize. Is this in your Bible? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ. Should be made effect yeah look look back up at uh verse 14 he goes i thank my god that i baptized none of you but crispus and gaius why aren't you naming your kids those <laughs> crispus <laughs> <laughs> but my point is christ didn't call paul to baptize people yet we see here he did he baptized a few people so it wasn't that he didn't believe in baptism that wasn't the thrust of his call that's what i'm saying Am I getting this across? Mm -hmm. He was called to do something else. And so when I say I'm called to make Holy Ghost worshipers out of people, I'm not saying I don't believe in baptism. Mm -hmm. I've been baptized. I've baptized people. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. But I am called to make Holy Ghost worshipers out of people. Yes. Again, context this is why I'm, I'm bringing it up this way. Is this making sense? Mm -hmm. Paul did not baptize. He said he was not called to baptize, but he did baptize. How about John the Baptist? Did he baptize anyone yeah but he was called to baptize do you see do you see what i'm saying john the baptist wouldn't have been much if he didn't baptize people he would have been john so we had that whole list of things that we shouldn't have to keep preaching over and over again and you don't have to listen to me you don't have to if you're called to preach something else it doesn't mean you don't believe it because it, you'll be accused of that oh you all you do is talk about the Holy Ghost all the time and worshiping him like he's God or something I don't know where that voice came from <laughs> you know what I'm saying you'll be accused of that but Paul here had the same thing happening it that's not the thrust of his call it doesn't mean you don't believe it are you getting this it doesn't mean you don't believe those I believe all those things the problem is I believe all the things better than most people do I can check them off I believe this that this all the stuff mm -hmm. and I'm like oh I just happen to believe something else I happen to believe the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today 
and I walk with him Romans chapter 15 and verse 20 this is Paul again yay say yay. yay so have I strive to preach the gospel not where Christ was named lest I should build upon another man's foundation say man's, man's. Foundation. foundation so these are men that came and laid a foundation we started with this yes. are we still here men called to do something and lay a foundation Paul's saying here he's very careful not to come in and preach the way he's gonna preach Christ lest he basically disrupt somebody else's foundation because the fact is mm -hmm. worshiping the Holy Ghost is a completely different foundation yes. Yes. and you have to be willing mm -hmm. to have your old foundation yeah. get torn apart and crumble away mm -hmm. which is sad because I really liked it and I was really comfortable there yeah. right yes. I really liked it it was it was, it was me it was, yeah. it was the real me <laughs> but you got to let it go yeah. Yeah. right yeah. lest I build upon another man's foundation Holy Ghost worship builds a brand new foundation and you have to be willing to let the old one go away and it's not always easy because a lot of it's attached to your old friends and they don't like you anymore people have a problem with you messing with their foundation and I'm telling you worshiping the Holy Ghost I know I've had to have my foundation removed and now I'm built on a completely different one but this one is taking me somewhere and it'll take you to the same place and it's gonna be great are you here you know it's true Holy Ghost worship builds a brand new foundation everything's new the context has changed so you enter a room of Holy Ghost worship do you understand these words yes. say I enter, I enter a, room a room of Holy Ghost worship it's an actual room that you enter into with the use of those words that other people who don't use those words are forbidden access to are you here yes. do I need to say it again maybe you enter a room through the use of those words hey I'm telling you the angel told me to use those words he could have told me to use any other number of words I'm trying to build some context and belief here so that when you use those words you know you are entering into a room of Holy Ghost worship that not everyone else is in are you here and I preach from this room people wonder where you get these messages from I, I go I worship you Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost only you are God near today and I'm in that room and it's just different in here mm -hmm. are you here mm -hmm. <laughs> Philippians chapter 1 verse 7 you all are partakers of my grace now what do I mean by that I mean if you use those words the same grace that's on me comes on you yeah. and you can go to the same place in the same room and it's a big room believe me mm -hmm. and you're partakers of my grace does that make sense mm -hmm. welcome to my grace now by the end of these three messages there will be a shift that takes place in you where you will enter into a grace that you've not had access to before mm -hmm. are you here yes. everything is in this room mm -hmm. say everything, everything is in this room, is in this room. and I'll, I'll preach more about this later but everything is in this room you've now been given access through worship 
of the Holy Ghost who is God in the earth today you are entering into a room where everything yes. is available to you yes. and it's an expansive room everything's in there yes. for you everything for you is in there say everything, everything for, me for me is in there, is in there. are you getting this yeah. is this exciting yes. So I encourage you to begin and I know most of you have already but I'm trying to lay a foundation and some context for belief yes. and I encourage you to use the words I worship you Holy Ghost it's how you enter yeah. it doesn't have to be difficult but once you enter listen listen to me for a second once you enter into this room there's no going back yeah. mm -hmm. you can't go back there's nothing there i've had people come to the church and be there for a period of time and then you know i know they're probably not even going to church anymore because of, what are you going to go back to mm -hmm. yeah. you don't want to go back no. yeah. say there's no going back there's, there's no, no going, going back, back. And he speaks of that in Hebrews once you've tasted the heavenly gift and the powers of the world to come because you are going to be exposed to things you've never been exposed to yes. before yes. and if you're gonna go someplace where the church has not gone you have to believe something that the church has not believed yes. well this is it yes. this is that yes. mm -hmm. so just say this after me Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. I worship you I I am your worshiper. I, am your worshiper. I, enter, in I enter in to this room, to this room of, Holy of Holy Ghost worship, and I thank you, I thank you for, everything for everything that is being, that is being given, to given to me in this space. In, this space. in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. The Father is in heaven. Jesus at his right. God.